This is Maurice Jones-Drew, and you're listening to the What's Brewing Show. You're listening to the What's Brewing Show, part of the What's Brewing Show network, with your hosts, Jake Berryfield and Mike Regalado, and occasionally some friends, talking all things UCLA sports. And now, it's time for the What's Brewing Show. Hello, welcome to What's Brewing. I am your host, Vic Merrifield. I'm joined by my wonderful, good friend, best buddy, Mike Regalado. What's up, y'all? From Brewing Report Online. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't have that problem. Here it is. One more time. All right. Oh, I still don't have a potty. Hell doesn't have it. One more time. Mike Regalado. There it is. That's a me. That's him. Yeah. Hey, good. From Brewing Report Online. And I'm wearing the... Oh, 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 breaking news. Uh-huh. Breaking news. Oh, I just lost the button. Where is it? It's right here. Jeez, I'm lost. What's brewing? News, news, news. Breaking news on a weekly basis. News just in. Mike happens to be wearing the most popular shirt in college football right now this moment. Mike, it, what is it? Yes. It is. Uh, it says EA Sports College Football 25. And on the back, Jake. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Men of Westwood. Men of Westwood. I Look just, I that. literally just came from the event. Go and uh, yeah, this podcast will seem weird Go because Bruins. I show up later in the past, in the future. What you're looking at so is now. now. Yeah. You're looking at now, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I just came from there and it was a, a, a wonderful event. And I'll get into the details later. Don't talk but, about it yet. Yeah, no, don't, not talking about it yet. But I just rushed. Uh, to the North Valley from from Westwood, uh, fun event uh, because I wanted to be here for a uh, a guest that we've had on many times, and yeah, I cannot wait to uh, get into what he has to say about uh, the, the 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 future, the, this upcoming season of UCLA football. There's a reason this episode is called the Blue and Golden Hour, a Blue and Golden Hour with Wayne Cook. I think that's what I'm going to call it. Because nice. we got an hour with Wayne, and it was wonderful. It was it was absolutely fantastic. And yeah. Yes, Mike comes in about halfway through that, and um, and Wayne was very giving with his time, as he always is, but especially so tonight. So we have that to look forward to. We're going to get you right to that in just a moment. But first, we are the What's Bruin Show on the What's Bruin Show Network. We thank you for your support at What's Bruin Show on in- Instagram, Twitter, Threads, if we ever thread anything. Uh, email us What's Bruin Show at Gmail dot com. Uh, please send us your thoughts on sound drops for any particular Big Ten team because we have a bunch that we have to think of. So I'd appreciate that help. Um, we're, we're group thinking that. Um, on the, uh, you can subscribe to the What's Bruin Show in the What's Bruin Show network, whatsbruin.substack.com on the Substack, or patreon.com slash what's Bruin Show, or just what's Bruin Show.com for just how much, Mike? $2. Two dollars. Two dollars. So it's a couple bucks a month or a little bit more, depending on what platform you use. Um, he also, uh, we have some other shows on the feed. I posted uh, my first bare minimum with my wonderful daughter, Megan. The bare minimum. Uh, just in this last week. You can find that on the bare minimum sub stack. Or if you're a subscriber, it's going straight to your uh, subscriber feed. Uh, you know, I'll send all those extra ones to you as a subscriber. So thank you very much. But that was a good conversation about her trip to Paris. Uh, and uh, there's a My Locker site where you can buy What's Brewing merchandise. Uh, that's down in the show notes. You can search the show on YouTube, of course. Uh, and the last but not least, you can call the hotline, 805-399-4WBS. Suck it, Randy Troy. Suck it, Randy Troy. And we do have a hotline call later in the show. Mike, remind me to play that because I got a hotline call. So football season must almost be here because the hotline is back in business, and we appreciate that. But with that being said, I'm, I've already talked too much because I want to get right to our wonderful interview with Wayne freaking Cook. All right, join us on the What's Brewing Hotline once again. It is one of our favorite guests of all time. It's none other than the UCLA sideline reporter, Wayne Cook. He teaches kids in the classroom. He teaches all of us on the field, on the radio, and uh, he also talks college football like 24-7 all the time. Wayne, how are you doing tonight? What's going on? I'm, I'm good. I, I just got to tell you guys, I I haven't been doing enough of this, so I, I, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm fiending for some college. 
football talk. So I, I'm very excited to be on the show as always. No, no, and we are excited to have you now, Wayne. Like it, I just it just kind of hit me today with you in that you know for many years I was kind of on a teacher schedule even though I'm a cop. And I just remember always like the dead period is like kind of now June is when you take your vacation stuff. And then, and then you start ramping up in August, but then again, the football season starts ramped up in August too. And then it's just like bonkers crazy with work and trying to be college football. And you actually have, you're a professional in both worlds. Like how the heck do you deal with your summer? And then how do you heck do you deal with your fall? You know, it's weird. Summer is family and golf season. So I play a ton of golf. We go on family trips. We do all we can, and it feels like it's about a month and a half. Right. I'm starting to read the magazines. I'm starting to, uh, you know, you know, you guys are, are are great fans of college sports now. I just talked to Darn right. Stephen Hartzell, and, and he's like, yep, we're, we're, you'll just be our Big Ten rep this year. So <laughs> very excited. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. It's so weird, but I, I did three pages of notes just today on stuff that I, I, I want to – I can't wait to get started. So I, I, I'm fired up. I'm, I'm up about UCLA. Um, I know we're going to get into this, but I, I'm, I'm actually already starting to get mad because how <laughs> we're just being undervalued by everybody. Oh, absolutely. And it, 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 whether they're talking about coaches, quarterbacks, or running, it's just like every single one we're down near the bottom. And so I, I can't wait for us to to kind of mess with people a little bit this year. Oh, we are definitely going to get into that because I had a, a similar reaction to that. But first of all, I want to make sure I don't forget, uh, since you have been talking to Hartzell lately, could you please pass on our regards and just please tell him suck it uh, for us <laughs> from What's Grinch Show. We'd love that. Yes. Um, second, of course I will. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And then second of all, like I just want to get into like what the latest news has been because I I, I had a nice rea- – I, I had a reaction to it, I should say. I wanted to know what you thought about um, the scheduling news of the Bruins uh, dropping the Georgia and Auburn games off the schedule in the next few years and then adding back in – four years of Cal and sandwiching that with two years yeah. of Utah. What was your reaction to that news? First of all. So you'll laugh at this. I have a, a group text with uh, many former players and I, 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 so I get immediate reaction oh, from, man. and as we get, as we get older, we get mad because like, you know, people I played with, we're like, we played Tennessee and Nebraska in the same, you know, non-conference <laughs> or we had, you know, Michigan, Alabama one year we because we used to do that we used to play you know two big time teams and yeah. at least one absolutely every year and it wasn't but I always remind people it was a different world back then we didn't have playoffs we we had to if we lost one of those games like like for example we lose to you know Nebraska my my junior year 14 to 13 at the Rose Bowl it sucked And that was one of, you know, that was Tommy Frazier and those great 90s teams. It sucked to lose that game, especially when we thought we we should have won it. But we still played a Rose Bowl that year and won a a conference championship, and we've only had one more since then. So it's like sometimes in those days you could lose a game or two and still find a way to get yourself to a conference championship, and that was – what the goal was what right? you played for yeah. that was what that was what the goal was i mean and now you you think and everybody you know from ucla former players on down are like why are we doing this i'm like well we'll slow down it's not just us the secs it, it was it was a mutual agreement uh lsu remembers what it was like to come out here and lose a game early to the last time we played an sec team and so some of those games both teams are why i remember michigan backed out uh, against us we didn't back right. out against them because winning those non-conference game matter matters the most and, I, and i'll keep reminding people too because even though ucla's moved from the pac-12 to the big 10 we still play nine conference games and with these conferences being loaded like they are now you just you can't afford to 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 lose you know games and so sometimes and it's not to say that cal's still not going to be tough and we added Utah, and that's 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 obviously never an easy an easy matchup. So so we're still playing good teams, but it's not going to be Georgia and Auburn. But it is a bummer from the fan base. But I kind of get it. And I also would throw in this: um, it probably has something to do with travel, also. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's 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 just it, it's the nature of the business now. Um, I get so mad. I, I I did this earlier today when I was prepping for some football stuff. I went through. I think it was Florida State and Clemson from the ACC because, you know, they only play eight conference games. And I went through uh, Alabama and Georgia, and their their, their, their November, their late November, but that extra, that fourth non-conference game, mm-hmm. it's just I didn't even matter who, who's playing. It's, Mer- it's Mercer, UMass, Citadel, 
and Charleston Southern. Daunting. Wow. That's very yeah, impressive. daunting. And they and they play that right smack dab in November when everybody else is getting the crap net kicked out of them from playing conference game after conference game. So I, I kind of get it, even though I totally get that it sucks from a fan perspective. Because, I mean, shoot, I was going to be standing on the sidelines at Georgia. Yeah. And now I'm not going to be. So so I'll enjoy LSU that much more. But, you know, it's, it, it's those games are fun to be a part of. No, they are. But, you know, I was very mixed reaction because, like I said, I, I was looking for the for the opportunity to see the Bruins play Georgia. But I, I also wasn't sad to see Cal come back on the schedule because I like that trip. And I, I'm selfish. I have a daughter up there right now. So it's like uh-huh. it's good for me personally. Awesome. But um, yeah. but yeah, I was kind of mixed. I, I kind of right. I think Glenn right where you were on that wing. But, you know, what you just said kind of leads me to like it, it made me think of another thing. And that's, you know, for years and years. And all, however, I've always looked at college football. I was always less about the national picture and more of I just want UCLA to compete and win the conference, compete and win the conference. Right. But now that, you know, that the it's broken down how it is and you have the SEC and the Big Ten, it's kind of this like arms race. And then you have the other, uh, you know, quote unquote, major conferences, which they're still major. But, you know, now we're in this situation. But now it looks like, you know, the lion's share of the bids for the playoff are going to go to the Big Ten and the SEC in any particular right. year. Does that kind of change what fans and, you know, maybe even coaching staffs are kind of like putting their attention on. Obviously you're always yeah. going to want to win the conference, but do you think it's going to be a bigger goal to yeah. be like, we just want to make the playoff kind of thing? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because I, I agree with you there. I think when we went to the, you know, the BCS and then we went to the 14 playoff, it was still like, realistically, let's win the conference. Let's right. just do our best to get to a Pac-10 championship game, Pac-12 championship game and see what happens. And so that that was that was still kind of the way I was thinking, but as we move on to this modern era of of, of college football, I think you kind of you know obviously when you're playing in a in sixteen and eighteen and, and eighteen or maybe even a twenty team conference by the time this is all you know done, depending on what happens with the ACC and all that stuff, like you're gonna have to play for that one of those twelve spots. Yeah. And. And and the cool thing about it is, and and I this is what I love about it because I tell people this all the time. You know, we we finished you know the season eight and three, in my Rose Bowl season, and we lost those three games by like you know like dude like one, two and five. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we could play with anybody. And and Nebraska that year played for a national championship. So I said, when I played, I felt like the sixteenth or seventeenth or even twelfth team in the nation could compete with the top four or five teams and, and, it, and maybe not the top team, but maybe the number two or three or four team. There was more parity. I felt right now. It just feels like it's the same teams that get every five star, every great player. And they just, they just went at such a high click. And with as much coverage as they get from ESPN and everybody else, it's like every kid, for, and it's so much easier to travel now. It's just created these monsters and we just get the same teams winning over and over and over again. Um, I think this could change it a little bit. I, I don't love all the changes that have happened in college football. I love that that Michigan did their thing, and they hadn't done that in a long time because that's an academic school. I love seeing the academic schools out there. You know, people don't like to accept the fact that the Michigans and the Notre Dames and the UCLA's and the, you know, these these schools that actually have academic requirements. It's it's tough. Yeah, you no you gotta you know you you've gotta you know. So I I love seeing that, but. Um, Yes, to answer your question, I, I think the 12 team playoff, you can finish. Okay, I've watched a ton of the SEC coverage of their media days, right? And their their panel is already talking about that the SEC should get five or six of the 12 spots. And then, of course, we expect this because the SEC is that machine where they've convinced the whole world that everything that they the do best. is that. Oh, my God, yeah. And, and and always, and it doesn't even matter. They don't they don't care. It's so five or six teams, but they're also talking about. And I heard someone on the Big Ten Network talk about this too. You could literally be a, a, with two losses in these big conferences where you play the schedules they play. You've got a good shot. Yeah. But with with three losses, you're not out. Your three losses have to be the right kind of losses, and you have to have a a good some good enough wins. But you could argue, and I kind of agree with this, that there's a chance for, I mean, let's just put it this way. If UCLA with their schedule, which is number one or number two or number three, it's it's right there as one of the toughest in the whole nation. Certainly. If they went through that, let's just say they took two of the three against that Penn State, Oregon, you know, that that three in a row that's just a gauntlet. Now we're talking about Let's just say they took. 
Yeah, no, let's say they <laughs> took two out of three. But and, and and they still have to play, you know, Washington or you know, all these teams. Yeah. And they they end up nine and three, but they have some really big wins. With that schedule, there's an argument. Yeah. Like you start thinking, could they be the twelve? So so I, I like that because you don't have to like act like the how like how often have we heard it? And I always bring up that one game with um with uh with Utah or with Oregon or whatever at the very beginning of the season. And you lose by a field goal or one point, and they say, not only is Oregon done, but the whole conference is done now. I'm like, they've played one freaking game. Those are the dumbest. So, yeah. they're the dumbest things ever. So I, I like this because I think that, um, and I heard one of the guys on um, on SEC Network say this: it's possible for teams to get hot. It's possible for teams to get healthy. It's possible for things to happen in, in, in a season where they're not the same team they were. In every other sport, we see that. Yeah, we see sports go on. They go on a run, even if they had a crappy start to the season. They finish strong, and they're as good as anybody when the season ends. I think we'll see that a little bit, and there may be a, a year where we get a, a lower seed, make it into the playoffs that's playing better than anybody, and that'll be fun to watch. I think it will be, and I think you know, I think you just hit the nail on the head. That is what the biggest change in college football is going to be now that we have this system that's been expanded. And I just never really bought the argument that people would give where they where that was the absolute worst case scenario. It's like, I never bought that. You know, they, they say, Oh my God, we yeah. can't possibly have a champion. that had two or three losses. Well, if they get on the field and they beat somebody, then why the hell not? You know? Exactly. So thank you. I, I mean, you're, yeah, you're preaching the choir on that one, Wayne. Uh, yeah. uh, one more national question before, you know, a conference question before we get to just the Bruins, which I want to talk about, but that is, you know, you said it earlier, you're going, you're going to be the, the big 10 rep on college sports now and, 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 and be speaking for the big, 10 conference now how are you going to feel about that you know rubbing elbows with your new big 10 comrades and kind of commiserating with your old pac 12 comrades how, do, how are you feeling going into the season with that aspect well you know to, to be honest with you um i'm struggling and i'm trying to talk myself out of struggling too much with the, <laughs> the, the modern the modern world because i want to are love college on? football i i don't <laughs> Well, shoot. I mean, the, the world feels like it's falling apart right now. Yeah. Um, but the idea that that I, I was watching um, two people that I respect a lot and two people that I like, I was watching Rich Eisen and Bruce Feldman. And it was a great interview. And they're talking college football. They're just sitting around. And, I, and like I said, I really like those guys. I like what they stand for. But they very flippantly just kind of said, well, you know, NIL is good for college kids and transfer portal is good for college kids. That's just, and, I, and I just, I wrote it down as soon as I heard it because mm. they said it like it was a fact. And I went, so when a kid gets a job in Hollywood at 10, is that an automatic good? <laughs> It's a very good, very you, good. You get, you, get, you get my analogy, right? Absolutely. Like when, when rock stars get their first record deal and start making all the money they could ever imagine and they're treated like like kings how many of those how many people die how many people end up being addicted to drugs i mean like Just fame and fortune like I, I i well i keep thinking that when you give people like you're giving kids in some cases over a million dollars out of high school they haven't earned squat from their college team Okay, or every time they have success, they enter the transfer portal to go seek out more money. Most of the success stories that I hear and I read about come from people that have to struggle. I feel like we've lost this idea that the struggle sometimes is what makes people really good. And so, and not that college athletes are struggling that much. I always think it's funny that we act like these poor kids never had anything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, have you ever been to a college campus? Right. And I play, I play in a different era, and trust me, I never felt like, yeah, I ran out of money sometimes at the end of the month, but I didn't run out of money because I was smart with my money. I ran out of money because I was spending it on beer and too much other stupid stuff. <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud, but like, That's okay. you know what I mean? Like, you, you do stupid stuff when you're kids. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right? So, like, the idea is, is like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I was even thinking that it's kind of funny that, you know, we might end up in this this era of of you know where there's a college football TMZ type show. For every you know, this is going to sound terrible, but for every you know, we've had a Georgia player, 
you know, it seems like every other week gets in trouble for driving. Oh, Probably yeah. a car that costs a heck of a lot of money. Yeah. By the way, are we not telling young people how dumb of an investment a uh, ridiculously expensive car is? No, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and there's because uh, there's nobody well, anyway, around. Know, I, by the way, I, I I know I sound like an old person right now, but I know there's a ton of I know there's a ton of people out there that are gonna be t- they're raised right, they're gonna get the right advice, and they're gonna handle this money the right way. And there's a lot of kids like that. Well, I, but if we yeah. act, if we act like it's it's kind of like when when your kid you know loses something, like they break their phone and you buy them a new one the next day, and a month later they break the phone and you buy them a new one the next day, and then, and then they break their another phone, they buy them a new one. That kid becomes spoiled, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It it feels like when we follow Colorado, sometimes you hear some of the stories come out of there. It feels like there's some spoiled there. No, just de- definitely right. No, it's just it, one it, example, by the way. Absolutely, no, and I'm, 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 you know, picking up everything you're laying down, Wayne. To me, like, you know, on the one hand, you have the issue of for so long this sport has been generating more and more and more money, and so I absolutely agree that they need to figure out a way right. to equitably split that up amongst the people that are actually more, earning the money. I don't think any of us are, are disputing that. However, like just to say that, oh, just pay them all, and then that's the end of the story. Like, like you just right. said, Feldman and, and uh, right. Eisen flippantly, get, like we need to keep working to try to figure out a way to best serve right. these people that are making this money. And I, I couldn't agree with you more, more Wayne, because this yeah. is not I the just, answer. It can't be the answer. Yeah, just, 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 just to end this, which is, which is, uh, which is so fun. I mean, I love these topics. Is that you know the idea is is that you know so many people out there are making decisions based on money in our world today. Like oh, yeah. there's just, everything's based on money, money, money. And it's, and I, I will always be a little bit worried about that. I do like what you said. And I know that um, there's some schools that have talked about, um, you know, basing money because, you know, we all these schools get the, whatever it's 20 million or 22 million or whatever they get spent on their athletes. Um, Plus NIL, I hope with that ruling that they really clamp down on NIL. I, I think they need to get figure out a way to get rid of pay for play. Yeah, and 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 then you know have it based on like instead of base, like if you perform well or you're a starter, you're going to get more money. And so I, I think that you know if you have incentives and you get paid for those incentives, like because I agree with you. I mean the money's there. I've always thought that giving the players a piece of the pie was fine. But you, the way we're doing it is 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 silly. But but here's what's fun: we have unlimited free agency. Well, let's be honest. Every yep. single time UCLA picks up an offensive lineman, I freaking smile from ear to ear. You and me both. Okay, I hate it. I hate it when we lose people. But to be honest with you, most UCLA fans will 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 probably not agree with this. But I feel like most of the players we've lost over the last few years. Yeah, I'm like okay. I mean, can listen, Kamari Ramsey is that's is the a one. That's the only one okay. I'm like. He was finally. he's the one. Well, and 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 the and tight and then tight end that went back to Utah. But I yeah. get that because that's where he's from. Those those two players were good players. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name right now. But he's a really good player. Um, those two players, like, but everybody else. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean to him, but we've already replaced him. Yeah, no, I right? we already have. We've gone out and got other players. So like, I, I I feel like we know we lose a receiver to the guys across town. I like our receiving core better this year. Mm-hmm. So like I've been okay with who we've lost. I really have been. So like, and the players we're bringing in have historically helped. We brought in some amazing transfers. So I kind of get excited about that. I wish it wasn't unlimited. That kind of bothers me a little bit. But but like, I still think it's make it makes college football fun. I mean, it's like it's really kind of exciting. College football was already great, but it is kind of exciting. So I, I'm not gonna lie and act like that's not kind of cool when you get a new present. No, it absolutely is. And I think we got to enjoy it while it is what it is, because I don't think it's sustainable going forward like this. Like they got to figure out some way to figure it out. But but yeah, we might as well enjoy the ride while it is. And I, I, I agree with you, Wayne. I UCLA's definitely gotten more through the transfer than they've lost. And that's every year. I think yeah. Kamari bites us yeah. in the butt so bad just because he number one went across town. We feel like it shouldn't have happened. And we feel like we should still have that coach, too. I don't know about you, but it's like all that just went down yeah. kind of eh. And that's what that's what bugs yeah. me about that. But. Well, it, it, by by the way, don't you think it's funny? We we started off talking about like the way that UCLA is being viewed, and by the way, with so many people that mess up, who's even on our team, and and like who's projected as starters, like it it becomes blatantly obvious that most of these people just hear what other people say and don't know do any research. Yeah, absolutely. So so, but it was isn't it funny that UCLA's beaten USC two out of the last three years? Yeah, two out of two out of the last three years. We have a quarterback coming back that if you look at what he did for the games he played last year, played really, really good. 
We have a receiving core that's very talented. We've shored up the offensive line. I have no idea what the starting lineup is going to look like when we when we kick off against Hawaii. I have no idea. I don't know who's <laughs> going to be center. I don't know who's, but we got dudes now. We got a bunch of guys, and and so now there's going to be competition. Okay, I would have liked to have picked up another running back to go along with TJ and and, and Keegan and those guys, but 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 it, so what? Those guys are still really good players. So like I, I look at this, we lost one player that I don't think we have anybody on the roster to replace. But so what, right? You you lose Latu, and he's a he's a generational type talent. But we still got some guys, lots of guys. And I'm sitting there thinking, so we've beaten SC two of the last three years, and the one we lost, remember, we had the ball with a chance to go down and win. Yeah, absolutely. And yet, and yet they're just acting like they're the SC SC SC, and that oh UCLA sucks. I'm like, do you guys even watch the games? No, it's it's popular. because we got a, we got a ton of dudes coming back. I know they've got Miller Moss. He had a good game. But I'm sorry to tell you this, but we got a guy that's really freaking good. Ethan Garbers is a very good quarterback. I I was just watching highlights of the quarterback from LSU that everybody's acting like the I, I'm pretty good at his name right now, but everybody acts like oh he's going to be great, he's going to do great, he's going to do great. I watched him play, I'm like he kind of looks a lot like Garbers. <laughs> the way he moves, the way he throws, and I'm like I just feel like it's all about it just it, it's just people hype certain people and they ignore other people and. That's why I'm getting kind of fired up because I felt like that ties into what I was like when I came into UCLA. Like, okay, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Whatever they said about me, this is what I'll, I'll show you. And I feel like as a team, I feel like that's what we – I hope we have that mentality. Um, and it starts from the coach because everybody's like, well, what's Deshaun Foster going to be? No, absolutely. You know, I, yeah. think he's gonna, I think he's going to be great. But, yeah, go ahead and – and I know he's the type of person, if you're going to knock him as competitive as he is – I mean, he's. I, I guarantee you, he's he's fired up to attack this and get after it and show people, you know, what he's capable of. Yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about Garbers because I think one of the reasons why UCLA is getting panned so much going into this season is just because of how it looked last season. Even though they ended up with a good record, you know, the offense was completely up and down, and that was a lot because of the. To me, in, in my opinion, it was because of the quarterback play throughout the year, right? But do you think yep. that if Garbers had played? through the year, been healthy or whatever, how much of an effect do you think that would have had on the, the offense overall? Okay, so, well, this is a this is a big question because, um, I mean, I, I had a conversation with a certain person a few games into last year, and if you know who the person was, you'd be like, dang. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and we both agreed that the wrong guy was playing. I mean, I, I'll even go back and watch that first game, and if you watch the first drive – I mean, Ethan looked great. Absolutely. Second drive, he looked great. He just threw the interception in the end zone. But one of the things I, I respect about Garbers is when, when he makes a decision to throw the ball, he pulls the trigger. And every once in a while, he'll make a mistake when he does that. But I would much rather have a quarterback. Like, one of his interceptions was against Travis Hunter. And I promise you, that was not a bad decision. That was just a ridiculously great play by a great athlete. Right. Like, he just totally came off his guy and jumped it, and it was incredible. So, like, really, you know, he had a pretty darn clean year and was really, really good what he wanted to be. And I'll, and I'll say, and I'm not a guy that's going to bash Chip Kelly because I think he did a lot of good things at UCLA. I know people get mad about his recruiting and all that stuff. But, man, we had a lot of great transfers. We had a lot of guys go to the NFL. We had a top five defense last year. We had a really high ranked, I think, top ten or top five offense the year before. So we did some good things. Could it have been better? Yeah. We had – Losses to Arizona two years ago that I still can't explain. We yeah. we lost to Arizona State and Cal last year that I still can't. I mean, like, and in and, and bad too, by the way, like just ugly, like like those I can't figure out. But I think the biggest mistake that Chip Kelly made was he went with Dante Moore. He shouldn't have. Dante Moore wasn't ready. I think we win at least two more games last year. And 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 remember, quarterbacks tend to get better when they play more. Yep. I mean, we were so good on defense. We only and, and that team last year at Utah was so beatable. We 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 win that game with Garber as a quarterback, and he had already played there before and showed that he could handle that kind of atmosphere. And the Oregon State game was a game that I think of Garber's plays. I mean, we were giving him points. Remember, we were throwing picks. And I, again, Dante Moore may end up being awesome because he's going to get to sit and watch a very good quarterback in Dylan Gabriel at at Oregon. And when he gets his chance, he may be ready. He just wasn't ready. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people also forget that Ethan Garbers, at some point, when he came out of high school, he was a four-star guy. It's not like he's a nobody. You know, he's got a brother that plays professional football. I mean, he's he's like like this is a really good player, a really good athlete. And I hope, I just hope, 
he comes out this year and shows it to everybody because I, I've liked him all along. And then I hope he proves me right because I think he's 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 legit. Wayne, I you know I just have a kind of a side UCLA history question going back a few years with with all this talk about Gar- the decision with Garbers and, and more because kind of I felt like last year that I, I thought the Garbers would have had the team team be better last year. However, I also thought that in the moment, like there was just so much momentum for more coming in with the recruiting story and then how that first game ended up playing out. Even though you know, like you said, Garbers played plenty fine, right? But you know, yeah. think about how that played out last year and how it did kind of lead to the end of the Kelly era, however you want to say it. I mean, that's, that was a big determining factor in in him choosing to leave. I'm always brought back to Rosen's second year when Jim Mora chooses to completely switch the offense around, right. And kind of change everything about going, how do you, how, I don't know. This is kind of a random question, but what do you think would have happened with Rosen and Mora's career at UCLA if they would have just stuck with Mazzoni or something Mazzoni like with the offense? Okay, this is an awesome question because I think about this stuff all the time. So historically, historically UCLA, and this is one of the reasons why I'm I'm bullish on on, on UCLA this year. Yay. we've done well with older quarterbacks. Mm. I mean, he, even even like Cade McNown, his last two years, it, you look at his first two years, there was a lot of mistakes and a lot of interceptions. It wasn't like you knew he was going to be good because you could see it. Yeah, but he he, yeah, he had it. Like you had. Yeah, you. But but his last two years, when we had the twenty game win streak, he was elite. Yes. So and and he was in total control of everything he was doing. For all the people out there that don't act like like playing football and having experience matters, just think about all the quarterbacks that we've watched. Penix had been in college for a long time. Bo Nix had been in college for a long time. Jake Daniels had been in college for a long time. Like experience matters a ton. Everybody was talking about Drew Aller last year. Like he was going to set the world on fire because he's this big, strong, great arm guy. He's young. Yeah. And then they write him off after one year. It's like, do you people even understand how this works? <laughs> it's really freaking hard to play quarterback. So it's funny because Rosen, he's interesting to me because, and this is something that uh, I'll get a little geeky on quarterback stuff. Please do. Matt Stevens and I used to joke around a lot about Noel Mazzotti's offense. He's drawn up plays on Matt's like Wayne. He's drawn up plays on freaking napkins. <laughs> it's simple stuff. It's very read one side of the field or just read two receivers and throw to the guy that's open. It's it was and I that's probably way too simplistic and I have to go back and watch because he's been a very successful coordinator. Yes, there are coordinators that young inexperienced quarterbacks can play with because they they limit you to one side of the field or they're almost telling you where to go with the ball. So. As a very, Josh Rosen had a great arm. Right. Through it, through it, like he was going to be a, you know, I know things didn't work out, but I thought he was going to be, you know, a ten-year NFL player because he's just he had that natural ability. Right. But if you made things really simple, and just let him made the make decisions and pull the trigger, you know, it was easier for him. And then when he got into an offense, I think that was a little bit more complicated. It did seem like he regressed. I I, I agree. Um, but still, you know, talented. And I think at that time, UCLA, the talent around it maybe wasn't, you know, what it was. That, I don't know. But e- either way, I, I like Drew Olsen. His senior year was amazing. Yeah. Okay. There's so many players, even even a guy like Tommy Maddox, who left after his sophomore year, his freshman year, he threw, a, he threw you know, he made a lot of mistakes. And, and we got better his second year because you get better by playing football. So. Either way, I, I, I don't know. I, I just it, it's going to be hard. That's the one thing I'm actually questioning this year. How much? Because they changed everything. I mean, they're going with. I mean, I shouldn't say they changed everything, but they're they're going with a new offense. Right. Okay. It doesn't mean it won't have similarities. It won't mean they just won't do some of the same, you know, concepts and stuff like that. It doesn't mean that. But you know, they had to learn new terminology. All the players did, and so that's tricky. And so, but it looked like by the end of spring ball that Garbers was, he, at the beginning, I wasn't so sure, but by the end, he was he was miles ahead of everybody else. Well, that's good At to least hear. that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. That's very good here. I was really worried about that. Uh, my, uh, Wayne, uh, real quick, I, I we have Mike in studio now, too, so uh, Mike Regalado's on the call, okay. and so he wanted to say hi as well. Wayne, how you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good, Mike. How are you, I, buddy? I literally just sat down because I came from the EA Sports event hosted by uh, Men of Westwood. And I got to interview uh, 11 players, and I asked a few of them about the offense without going into great detail. And some of them talked about what you said. It's it's a lot of it is similar, but uh, it's the terminology that changes. And they and yeah. they're talking about how from the beginning of of, of uh, spring, the terminology was maybe like uh, 
three to four word phrase. Now it's like nine to ten word sentences, and yeah. and and that's West what Coast. they have to get used to. Um, yeah. How hard is that? A two two part question. How hard is that for? just an entire team uh, to, 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 to transition from a new coach. And what we've heard that it's going to be a West Coast offense. From what you've seen, how do you think this offense is going to operate? So, so th- this is a, first of all, that's awesome. Uh, I, I, I was one of those things I was debating whether or not to drive up for it. Was it a fun event? It, it was actually really fun. I was talking to a, a, a few of the uh, um, men of Westwood, uh, workers yeah. and we we were just saying i was there with a few other reporters and we were just saying how just relaxed it was you know if uh, awesome. it, it was kind of like a pre-media day situation <laughs> but obviously it was it was centered around the ea sports college football 25 game and yeah. th- that's what fueled the fun and you could tell that these that's, that's players awesome. were just genuinely interested it, it was so funny to to hear some <laughs> of them be mad about their yeah. score either way but no it was a very it, it was a great event that's awesome. Well, okay. So, so to answer your question, so this is tough. So when I, I'll give you a little backstory. When I was at UCLA, we, we had a system that was created by Terry Donahue and Homer Smith, where we really simplified it. We did it like nobody else. We like, I, uh, our off tackle play out of the I formation was like, mm-hmm. right. Uh, 10, 12. Mm. That was the whole play. Wow. Right. 10, 12. That's good. And, and it was literally just a, a an off tackle to the tailback. And there goes Skip Hicks or Sharmon Shah or whatever. Like it was, it was fun. Ricky Davis. So right. it was, we did it very simple. So when I went to the NFL guys, my very first team, I followed my, my guy, JJ Stokes to the 49ers. I was lost. I was completely lost. So like, I, cause I had no idea. Like I knew, I knew everything about our offense. I knew our blocking schemes. I knew what everybody did. I, I understood the offense like nobody else, but the terminology was so different that I, when I walked into that, that locker room and I walked into meetings, I mean, I would literally like be fearful that I would have to get in it because I'm not the type of person that could just stare at a, uh, a playbook. I'd have to do it. Like I have to get right. out and actually run plays. So that's how I learned. So it was, it was really hard for me. And I actually thought it was, it was, it was, you know, it, it made it very, very challenging. These guys are getting a huge gift. You know, sometimes when you get, cause I remember when Bob Toledo came in and he was my offensive coordinator my senior year. I learned new stuff. Mm. Like, and I was like, okay, I didn't know that. I never thought of it that way. It was just a different way of putting it. So they're learning all this terminology. And can, you can't tell me all you guys that watch football, when you hear a quarterback call play, you haven't actually said, how the heck did they remember all that stuff? Yeah. Haven't we all done that? Oh, absolutely. They're so long. It's crazy, but that's what we're doing. And and once they get the terminology down and then what, like you said, like, it, it's some of the stuff probably is very close to what they did before. It's just got different terminology. So once they figure it out, they'll be okay. And I actually saw it from the beginning of spring to the end that they were getting a lot better. Well, that's good to hear. No, that's really good to hear. Cause that's what, that's kind of my biggest worry about the whole team. Cause if you would have told me all the guys they're bringing back on offense this year and there was yeah. con- continuity of what they were running, I would have been very, very just like, Oh man, they're going to, they're going to come in there and take, kick the shit out of some of these big 10 teams. Yeah. But with the, the learning curve of it, I'm, I'm worried about that part of it. Now, Wayne, when we yeah. look at the schedule, you already said earlier that you think the Bruins are going to beat two out of three of the <laughs> the big early three on the schedule. I know you didn't actually say that, but <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna say that you said it. But um, you know, you talk about that stretch. You know, after they you know they have the Hawaii and the and the uh, Indiana, they got at LSU, hosting the Ducks, and then at Penn State. You know, if you're yep. the coach, if you're Deshaun going into that stretch of games, obviously you know you want to go undefeated, but how do you prepare for a stretch like that for your team? you know, if, you know, uh, if you don't go undefeated and how do you come out of it? What do you, what are you looking for in that big old stretch of games that, that, that crazy schedule? It, it's, it's tough. And I, I've done a little bit of, of going through some of these schedules. Almost everybody has at least a back to back. That's tough. Yeah. That's a, that's a, and, 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 and by the way, we should not underestimate what Indiana is going to be. And I think that actually is the game that we have to get. We no can't doubt. like lay an egg in that game. We have to beat Indiana. Um, Oregon from what they're doing right now, I, Oregon kind of feels like I was joking around about SC gets so much love all the time. I, I feel like Oregon's in that boat too. People just love Oregon, but no doubt to be honest with you, I am a little nervous about Oregon cause they've, they've recruited such a high click and then they've got, you know, I, I always thought Dylan, Dylan Gabriel is a quarterback. I started evaluating when we thought we were going to get him. 
And, uh, you know, at this point in time in his career, he's kind of a mercenary, right? He's just going to move around and, 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 and he's, but he's really good. He's, Hired he's, a, he's a, he's a, he's a, but he's a guy who doesn't have the biggest arm in the world, but he's a really smart quarterback that puts the ball where he's supposed to. And when you surround him with the kind of athletes they have at Oregon, that it, it, it just makes them extremely dangerous. Uh, but again, I have to see them, you know, I have to see them win a big game and make it to the playoffs before um, I anoint them. But um, LSU's replacing a ton of people. They had a they had a defense, and, and I know people love LSU too. I know they recruit really really well. I remember the last time they were coming here wasn't too long after they had won a national championship, and we pretty much whooped them. So that was a great game. Um, I, I, it was a great game, and and we were the better team. Even though they, I guarantee, if you look at how many four and five star recruits they had on their team, they were the better team on paper. Yeah, but we were the better team on the field that night, and so that was that was awesome. So. It's just the atrophy of playing those three games, right? Like it's the it's 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 the fact that you know you you got to find a way to stay healthy. So I think the biggest thing from any coaching staff is, first of all, I don't think they're ever going to talk about that three game stretch. I think they're going to focus on one game at a time mentality because that's what we tend to do in sports, and you kind of have to do that. Yeah. But but the idea is is that you want to your training matters a ton. The the transfer portal additions on the offensive line, I was laughing a little bit when when I, I may be worried about the terminology in the new offense because I think it is hard. Um, but I was more worried about the offensive line coming into the season because that's <laughs> that's that that was what I was kind of like, we've got to get better there. Um, and I think we did. I think we kicked butt in the transfer portal. And if anything, we added more solid players in depth. Yeah. And I, I just I just think that matters a ton because when you play a schedule, and I think this is going to happen to a lot of teams this year. I think the teams in the – because you remember, you added four four really good teams from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten. And and not everybody plays everybody, but those you're not going to have as many easy weeks. It's it's going to be tough. So, so I just think getting through that time in the season healthy is going to matter a ton. And, and like I said, you're, what if you're, you know, what if you have two losses? But now you have the whole back end of the schedule where you can win a bunch of games. It doesn't mean that you don't have a Washington lingering out there. It doesn't mean that you don't have hard games to play. But remember, Washington should be down this year a little bit. I'm not saying they're not going to be good, but they may not be as good as they've been. Yeah, no so, so like, there, there's a lot of winnable games. You know, I'm not afraid of SC. I'll never say I'm afraid of SC. So, like, all those games down the stretch. So, you just got to try and stay healthy. Because you guys have seen it. We've, we like, we've all watched UCLA football our whole lives. My my first year, my, my 92 year, my sophomore year when I started, I blew my knee out in the first game. But that was just the beginning. We had a ton of athletes go down that year. And that team was loaded. And we all got hurt. We ended up a 500 team. You know what I mean? That's that's just what at UCLA, you know, some of these big-time schools that can recruit nothing but four- or five-star guys, at least in the past, they can afford to lose one or two players or three or four players because they've got other – they've got another four-star guy sitting there going, yeah, well, I'm ready now. Yeah. So for, for UCLA, I think that health thing, because I really do, I think we've got a ton of good players. We've added some depth, which which is which is awesome. Um, and so hopefully we can get through that without losing, losing too many athletes. Cause I think that's going to be key. No, absolutely. And then just real quickly with, the, with the defense, you know, they, every, some, how much they've, they've lost, right. You know, the edges, mm-hmm. uh, Kamari Ramsey, the defensive coordinator, all that stuff. But, you know, when I look at the guys that are still on the team, you know, get, keeping Jay Toya was huge. And then the huge. linebackers they have, are, I think they have some, some real talent there. And then they got a couple transfers in, a, in the in defensive backfield and stuff. What do you think is the most important thing about, the you know, going on with this defense? And do you think that they can somehow manufacture enough pressure to kind of keep the, the back end in the game? And, you know, and, and, and what do you think the, the strength of this defense is going to be coming into this year? Her strength's going to be linebacker play. I, I know we lost Musao, and I love Musao. He's a guy that, from his junior year to his senior year, he improved so much. And I just, I, he was always getting better. But we got Kane and 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 uh, Oladejo. That those two guys, I'm telling you, Madrano and Oladejo are are beasts. They're they're going to be all over the field next year. And I, you know, I don't know if it, has anybody heard or did you see Mike? Did you see John John Vons at the uh, video game thing tonight? Mike, was John John Bonds of the video game thing? Uh, possibly. 
<laughs> he, uh, th- 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 <laughs> no, th- there were there were just so many guys, and Men of Westwood was sending so many uh, players towards us. Like there there were guys that we were trying to get, uh, but I did not see him. Um, there there were a few guys like Cam Madrano. I, I specifically wanted to talk to him, and uh, he unfortunately had a uh, previous engagement. But uh, so I'm not yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Well, either way, I mean, we've, we've got guys. We, we've mm-hmm, got, yeah. I mean, I love the linebacking core. I, I said this earlier in the show, Mike, before you got here, I said that, um, you know, there's one player that you, you can't replace top 10 talent. It's really hard to do. You know, Latu is just unique and awesome and amazing. No doubt. And you know, I love the Murphys and I love Darius Moussau, but you can recruit guys that can play like that. Like UCLA's had players like that before. They'll have players like that again. I love our linebackers. They're experienced. They've played before. Um, you know, bringing in uh, – I, I stood next to um, Addison at uh, the, the senior game – I mean, at the spring game. So tall. He is, he yeah. is so tall. It's crazy. Game. And so athletic. And I, I think people forget that, that he was a really good player. I know things can went kind of weird, but whatever. I, I think he has a chance. I know we brought in the Henderson kid. Uh, to play as well. We still got Kirkwood. We still got um, Jalen Davies, who I've always liked, but we've got more guys. KJ Wallace. Like there's, there's guys that can play. You know, Kanye Clark. I mean, this guy just keeps showing up and, and doing things. So I feel like we have depth. I think linebackers are strength. I think defensive tackle would be our second strength, right? We right. got Jay, as you pointed out, and Jay Tawia was, 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 was quite possibly my favorite player on the team. Uh, I, I love Latu and, and, and Jay Toia, and they were both great friends. Uh, Keanu Williams, Gary Smith, Avili, um, Kapusi, those those guys can play. We Absolutely. got some some guys in the middle. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping um, J- Jacob uh, Busick can can do his thing at, at this level on the outside. That would really, really help if he could be kind of like a Mur- the Murphys type player. You know what I mean? Someone that can really you know cause some havoc. But I guess I don't know. I feel like the defense, when I watch spring, they're still walking around with a ton of swagger. One of the great things about having an elite defense is even though guys graduate, they pass on that ton of swagger and confidence yeah. to the next group. Yeah. I think that's that's why great teams tend, tend to just rebuild, rebuild, I mean, excuse me, reload. And they just, they, the older guys teach those younger guys how to work, how to play, how to do things right. And if you ever watched um, Latu work out, the guy worked as hard as anybody on the field. That's contagious. And if guys know, well, that guy's a top 10 pick, he's going to make millions of dollars and be this amazing player that's all over the TV all the time. I have to work as hard as that guy. And yeah. so that's that's what I love about that team being a top five defense of the nation last year is because they, a lot of those guys played on that. And then the new guys come in and they learn how to work and how to do things the way the last group did. No doubt. Uh, Wayne, I have one final question, and it's been coming up. I'm seeing it pop up on the social medias and all that, but it's about UCLA's travel. I estimated that they yep. are going to be traveling 12,338 miles uh, total for road games. Last year, they did not have a road game over 1,000 miles away. This year, they don't have a game under 1,000 miles away. Nice. How intense could this be for this team? You know, I, I wish I had a smart answer for that. I think it's I, I more think intense for Wayne and uh, Wayne and and uh, the the, the yeah. Dallas staff. It's gonna be tougher on you. <laughs> she is. Matt, Matt, and Josh and I will yeah. be traveling the exact same distance. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie to you though. I, I'm really excited about it, and and I think when you get to go to you know, you know, I don't know if I'm all that. You know, Rutgers is great, whatever. But like. When you get to play in places like Penn State, when you get to go to LSU, when you get to, you know, I'm excited about the Hawaii trip, but I, I can't wait for the LSU game. I, I've heard so many great things. I've never been there before. Yeah. And it's like a bucket list for me. And I think as a player, the great thing about football guys is you only play once a week. Yeah. And so what we used to do, like if we traveled to Tennessee or if we traveled to play someone that was a long ways away, sometimes you leave on Thursday instead of Friday. You know, you, you leave a day earlier just to make sure. Um, with school being the way it is now, and I know we don't start school for quite a while, like we'll already be, you know, we won't be in school for the LSU game. No. But but when you're in school, there's so much that can be done uh, on your computer now. You know, like, you know, it's not like you, you have to be in class to get all the information you need. So and it's a little bit easier. I, I feel more for, for sports that play more than one game a week. Uh, it's only six trips, you guys. So to me, let's just take that excuse off the, 
off the table. That's right. This team's traveled. This <laughs> we've, we've traveled before. No, it's true. You you can't you can't as an athlete go into the season. Uh, you can't be going. We have such a tough schedule. You have to embrace that tough schedule. And say bring it on. You can't say oh we're going to travel so much. But, but no, so what? It's six. It's six road games. You're going to be okay. Like you're gonna you're gonna be able to travel six times and play football games. So, uh, just take that excuse off the table. Don't don't and and play the schedule in front of you, and uh, enjoy it because it's an opportunity. I can tell you this. I remember going to Nebraska. I remember going to Tennessee. I remember those trips because that's why we played college football to go to these stadiums and play. I mean, you can't tell me that every single one of our players. Now that we're in the Big Ten, hey, we have great stadiums in the Pac-12. We yep. did. It's yep. fun to go to Oregon. It's fun to go to Utah. It's fun to play at Washington. I mean, those those are amazing stadiums. Okay, but you're telling me that these guys aren't fired up about the first time they get to go to Ohio State or Michigan or Penn State or any of these elite schools? Yeah. And then they're going to find out that oh, Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, that's that's crazy. Like it's just going to be so much fun for these athletes to be able to play in those environments. And if they don't want to play in those environments, then there's something wrong with them. Yeah, no, I think that's well, well, well said. Now, Wayne, Mike had a final question. Well, I got a final question. I'm sorry. But I want to bring it back to right where you started. And that is, you know, I'm looking at, you know, just like you, I'm looking at the magazines and I'm listening to the podcast. And I'm like, oh, UCLA, they're picked to be 14. Oh, UCLA, they're picked to be 16. Yep. Oh, UCLA, they're picked to be 15, whatever. Everybody, like I have not found anybody that national or local that has said UCLA will be any better than the bottom gutter tier of the Big Ten this year. But when yep. you look at like all the advanced stats, the advanced stat stuff, and then when you look at like what we know about our team, the, just watching them up close, you know, like the Bill Connolly's got him like as a top 40 team, I want to say, in like every aspect. And yep. I think a couple of the other models, they're like in the top 30 to 40 range, right? Which would put them well above the bottom tier of the Big Ten. So the, the bottom line, the, the question I have for you is, you know, what do you really think of the perception of the Bruins uh, right now going into this season? And do you think this is a, a good opportunity for them to kind of be under the radar and really kind of you know, have a, have a fun season here? What do you think about all that? You know, the, the perception, one of the, one of my favorite things about what Deshaun Foster has done since day one is whether it's, whether it matters or not with recruiting, it just feels more enthusiastic like, I honestly don't know if we're going to end up with a better recruiting class. I don't know if our transfers are going to be better because, like, we've already pointed it out. We got some really good ones under, under I mean, with all the players we're talking about, Lewis Al, the Murphys, and Latu, those were all transfers. Yeah. On, on, a, on a top five defense of the nation. So, but the perception of UCLA, and I, I, I have to be careful. <laughs> we've done this to ourselves in some cases. Yeah. We've just al- allowed – people to take the reins and whether it's our local beat writers or our whatever. And we've just allowed them to just bash UCLA over and over and over again. We have not been a bad football team in the last three or four years. We've lost some head scratchers, but we've, 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 we're like, I said, we're two, we've won two of the last three and, and we've won three out of the last six and six games against USC. We're, we're, we're three and three yeah. and two of the last three. Okay, we're, it's not like we're just rolling over. We beat Utah and Washington uh, back to back when they were both really, really good. Okay, I mean th- those are with 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 BTR his senior year. Like we've been close. We're putting a ton of guys. If you look at how many players we have in the NFL, we're up there, like really high. You like like we're we're in that kind of a, almost elite status. Now we don't win enough for the type of talent we have, which is frustrating. Yes. But it's not like we've been, you know, we've been terrible. Like, I, I go back to the COVID year. That was when we started getting better. That shortened season. Mm-hmm. We had, like, three games that year that we should have won. And I hate saying that because it stinks, but we were right there. I mean, shoot, we were playing with our – I remember the Oregon game with, with Chase? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was awesome. But, I mean, we had that game. We, we had it. But, but the idea is, is that we're not that far off. UCLA is still a great destination. Smart kids want to come to the school and get a degree. Uh, we got transfers coming in. I mean, shoot, we've got transfers on our team from elite universities. We get tons of players from places like Notre Dame. We've got players from Alabama. We've got players from Michigan. We've got, I mean, we, we're bringing from USC right across town. I mean, we're bringing in people um, and good players. And so for me, guys, um, the perception, I think one of the things, and again, I don't know this for a fact, but it feels like, Deshaun Foster and his staff 
are done with that. We're going to, we're going to make UCLA out to be the best place ever. He's been great with the media for now. The media is on his side and you know how quickly that can change. Oh, no. But it's in, in the fan base. Sometimes we start believing all the negative press and we don't want to hear anything positive because we're mad because we want to win every game. But there are, there are programs out there that no matter how bad it gets, they always twist it to make it sound like they're great. And I'm just telling you, like, sometimes don't be a realist. Be overly positive. We just need it because fans, parents, everybody knows how a school is perceived. And if you're perceived as a school that's up and coming, that has a brand new coaching staff, that has so much energy and that every player likes, because you guys are hearing the same stuff. Even if players don't choose UCLA, they're not doing it because they don't like the staff. Right. And so that, to me, is a huge, huge start in the right direction. And then, obviously, you got to win some big football games to, to let people know that not only are we talking, but we're also going to show you that we can win on the field as well. And then recruiting takes off. And so that, to me, is, is, is where we're at. I, I, I've hated the perception of UCLA football for way too long now. It bothers me. I, I get mad at reporters. I get mad at everybody else. Um, and and, and I, I hope – that we can turn that around because I actually think it matters quite a bit. No doubt. Absolutely, Wayne. No, and uh, very well said once again. And yeah, I think we're right there with you. Now, Wayne, we have kept you for almost an hour and we want to thank you very much for indulging us for almost an hour. Uh, and uh, dude, it's, it's always so much fun to talk to you. Now you, you have, guys, yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I was gonna say you have, you know, it's a couple weeks left before it really ramps up. So I hope you enjoy the rest of that. I am a little concerned for you uh, going into an election year, having to teach eighth graders history <laughs> and election politics. So I'm praying for you there. But um, man, uh, it, it's always too much fun to talk to you. And uh, we hope we catch up to you again at least once or twice during yeah. the season. Well, you guys, I think you know me well enough. Uh, like my guy, you know, Stephen Hartzell on, on CSN, he okay. always jokes around. He says, Wayne, you're the only show I do all week where I don't really have to prep because no matter what I prep, you're going to take it off the rails anyway. So no doubt, it, it's you guys know this really well. I love to talk UCLA football. Yes. And I appreciate what you guys do. And I appreciate everybody that, you know, I don't always agree with everybody that covers UCLA football because that's what makes sports fun, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to agree. I know some people out there probably think I'm the biggest homer in the world. Like, I don't know what our schedule is going to be. <laughs> I, I get it. I, I, I mean, excuse me, our schedule. I don't know what our record's going to be. I have no idea. We, we, we could win eight, nine, ten games. We could, we could, we could lose eight, nine, ten games. I don't know. It's a really, really hard schedule. Everybody recruits. But I'm going to all end with this, you guys, because I appreciate you and I love this. Everybody that's acting like these Pac-12 schools aren't going to be able to handle going into the big, mighty, you know, Big Ten. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, but Pac-12 was better conference last year. Mm. I love it. I mean, it's like it's like I, I, it's almost like people don't really watch or pay attention. Pac-12 yeah. was loaded. Really, the last two years, the Pac-12 has been loaded. Yeah, they were a little bit down before that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Do you think we're gonna play our defenses are gonna play better quarterbacks in the in in the Big Ten or in the Pac-12 last year? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, it's not even close. So, and, and a couple of the best quarterbacks are probably gonna come from the from the the Pac-12. Um, whatever I, we could, we could go all day, you guys, but I, I am excited. Uh, I cannot wait. Travel is no excuse. We're not using it. Uh, as a matter <laughs> of fact, right. the fans need to travel. I want to see a ton of you at, at LSU. I want to go to those games. I mean, how many opportunities are you going to get? I don't, I know we only get so many seats, but man, go, go buy some from scalpers. Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> let's get after it and show up. That's right. I love it, Wayne. All right. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it, it, I want to know, you know, uh, all this Big Ten talk about those big lines and stuff. I mean, show me a guy that's bigger than Jay Toya, Gary Smith, and freaking uh, Keanu Williams. Those are big dudes. So come on, let's go. I'm ready. I'm already ready, ready for it. Yep. Can't get here soon enough. Bring it. Wayne, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck prepping for the season. And, and you know, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you in uh, Baton Rouge, I think. I think that's how it's going to be. All right, perfect. I, <laughs> I can't wait. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Have a Thanks, good night, Wayne. Wayne. Take care. Do you think we drink too much? No, no, we don't drink too much. Men face reality, women don't. That's why men need to drink. I hate it when podcasters talk about what they're drinking. That little weirdo makes the best one I've ever had. What else am I gonna drink, Bob? A fucking fresca? No, we're not having frescas tonight, Mikey, but uh, we are having a 
I'm having a cocktail. You're having a beer, as per usual. Thank mm-hmm. you for joining What's Brewing Symposium. Symposium is a conversation over drinks, and that we're what we're having right now. Mikey, you had a couple beers, but uh, mm-hmm. you're going to an old time favorite. Yeah, I actually have it. I saw this uh, on the shelf in uh, the local liquor, liquor store, and uh, I, I realized uh, what the hell's wrong with you, Michael? Uh, you have not had a Bear Republic Racer Five India right. Pale Ale in a while. This is actually one of my favorite beers. Uh, and yeah, just cracking it open, taking a sip. I, I, I it brings brings me back to why um, I liked IPs in the first place. Because I've told you how I've kind of got into the fruity uh, IPAs, which are all right. Um, a lot of good modern uh, current beers that, that that are very tasty. But if you want something that's hard hitting, Racer Five IPA. Very nice. I am having a wonderful looking cocktail. I, I finally found something that has this, this nice red color. It kind of looks like a Singapore sling color. It doesn't taste like that, but it's just a refreshing cocktail that I kind of stumbled upon. It's called the Scofflaw. It's got rye whiskey, dry vermouth, lime juice, and grenadine, and a little bit mm. of orange bitters. It's pretty cray, um, but uh, very good. <laughs> I never would have made this, but uh, it, it's really good. I like it. It's cray. Yeah, uh, but an uh, ounce and a half of rye whiskey, ounce of dry vermouth, three quarter ounce of uh, lime juice, half ounce of grenadine, and a dash of orange bitters, stir it up, and um, put it in a cocktail glass. I, I served it over ice, and I think it's really good. Um, I want to thank you for your support with the What's Brewing show and the What's Brewing Symposium for just a little bit a month. How much, Mike? Two dollars. You can support the What's Brewing show. Send it in the future. What's Brewing.substack.com or Patreon.com slash What's Brewing show or just What's Brewing show.com. <sighs> you get extra shows from time to time. You get access to our Slack channel. But really, you'll just be knowing that you're helping this independent podcast in the college football landscape stay afloat and we appreciate that we're going to keep doing it regardless but it sure would help if you supported us so thank you for your support and uh cheers to you First of all, what an interview with Wayne Cook. That was outstanding and awesome. Dude, above and beyond. Big ups to Wayne once again. Big, big applause. That's not a slow clap. That's a genuine, like, we have hey. feeling clap, but we love that. But we also have microphones in our faces. That's true. <laughs> uh, but, Mikey, you came in halfway through because you were at a super cool special event uh, surrounding the, you know, uh, all around the unveiling of the, ES, uh, the EA Sports College football game, mm-hmm. uh, college football 25. Have you gotten it yet, Jake? I ordered it. It's supposed to get delivered on Thursday, but I haven't had okay, my yeah. mitts on it yet. How about you? Uh, I don't even have a uh, system to play it on. Exactly. Okay. What a, what a <laughs> shame. What I a... barely play video games anymore. Yeah, yeah. I still have 14. Like, I think I'm on uh, season What a shame. 2029. 20, yeah. Um, still playing 14. Oh, I dude, I, I never stopped. I, that's but beautiful. that's the thing. Like, I just don't have time to play video games. And whenever I do, it's either between that and Grand Theft Auto V. Because well, sometimes you just need to fly a chopper around an island. I'm yeah. just saying. Malcolm got banned from GTA V for a month. So what? we'll see. Yeah. By you or by, by the network? The network. I don't know. <laughs> I think he had some cheat code or something. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> nice. As far as I go, like, I went, uh, like, 10 years without playing Madden. And then I got into a Madden League, like, a few years ago. Uh-huh. Played, like, six seasons in a row. Yeah, probably, probably 10 seasons. And it was just, I was spending way too much time doing it. Yeah. So I was like, I got to quit. I can't do this. Because I'm, I'm spending way too much time, like, obsessing over, like, a right tackle from the Steelers that I want to recruit, you know, that I want to uh, get in free agency <laughs> or a guy in the draft. I'm like, this is not even, this is not real in any sense of the word. word. And it was just too much time. So I'm really concerned that I'm going to fall down a rabbit hole with this game. Um, I'm, I, you know, so we'll see how it goes, how I much I play. Our, our, our friend uh, uh, James Williams uh, from, yeah. from the uh, SoCal News Network. We love James. Uh, he's been all over it. And he uh, yes. talked to him uh, because he played. A uh, game came out on Monday for the, I guess, the, the people who bought the exclusive. They had a couple advanced whatever it issues was. of it, yeah. Uh, he's already gone through a season. Oh, man, James. Yeah. So, um, and he was just saying it is, the graphics are good. Uh, it, it, it's different too, like like throwing a pass. It's not just uh, you, you tap it and you float the ball, or if you hit it, you you do a, a bullet pass. You it, it's like there's an accuracy meter. So yeah. you hit it, and you also have to hit the meter right in the middle or something like that. It's it's crazy. They had the same similar thing for Madden, yeah. and it's uh, yeah. They've added the portal, it's very hard to the, the transfer portal, as well as recruiting. Yeah. Uh, there's just so much stuff uh, in it, and apparently. 
uh, from what what I'm hearing from from people is that they are going to update the teams as the season goes along. For example, if um, if like uh, uh, Justin Martin, who was not very happy with his speed, what? Uh, his uh, his speed numbers. Do tell me. Um, they would see how he plays. Uh, oh, obviously, he's a backup quarterback, so we might not see him. Actually, we might see him in a few games in, in the non-conference. They'll adjust uh, his numbers, his skills, according to how he performed. Mm. They will add or take out um, plays according to what teams are showing. Because uh, that's what I asked uh, a lot of the players. How does EA Sports' representation of UCLA's offense differ or how similar is it to uh, what Eric Bieniemy is bringing? And a lot of the guys are like, oh, they, they did an okay job, but nah, they missed a lot. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Well, that's good. Um, so it was just, uh, we got a lot of insight to not only the game, but how the uh, players perceive the game. And we also talked to them, uh, a few of them, a few of them, a lot of them, about, uh, you know, the upcoming season. So um, where should we start, Jake? Well, number one, uh, where was it, Mike? It was at the Wasserman Center. This is uh, obviously I go to Spalding Field and the Wasserman Center for Spalding. practices and uh, uh, Spalding Field yeah. uh, for practices, spring, uh, spring practice. And now we're coming up on um, uh, fall camp. I had previously only been in the first floor where the weight room is. This time they were having this event uh, was on the on the field where it was. Uh, let me back up a little bit. 4 p.m. The VIP section. So. You pay a little bit more. You get to chat with uh, players, play some games, um, have some food. Uh, and at 6 p.m. is when the general admission came, uh, uh, tickets uh, were allowed to come in. And it was basically, you know, downstairs, um, just food, players walking around, donors, men of Westwood, uh, uh, donee, don't, don't, donees. Hmm. What, what do you call those? Don't donaties, <laughs> donors, donors. Yeah, oh, god damn it, I'm so tired. <laughs> donors, thank you. Like Do- when you give blood, Mike. <laughs> They're not donuts. Donies. They're not donuts. Wow. Um, but it was really cool because, like, <laughs> actually, you know, so, so there were there were a few people who were like, you know, recognized me and and Tracy McDonald from yeah. Rivals and and uh, our, our friend friend James Williams from the uh, Southern California News Group. Um, but yeah, we, we uh, talked about how we were going to attack this because we had no idea exactly what it was going to be like. So we got confirmation that we can interview, uh, a lot of the players and, uh, yeah, cool. we, we basically made it into a scrum. So it was us three talking to the different players and it was just so, so much more relaxed. Like, you know, I, I would say, I would even say a little bit loosey goosey. It was a bit silly because I, w- with some of Which the, inter- is what it should be for something like this, right? Exactly. And yeah. it, that's why we were like, if they do this every year, which they should, we talked to Ken Grauer, who was the uh, head of the, uh, men of Westwood. We're like, dude, this, ha- this, this has to be a yearly thing. And he goes, we're going to try to make it that way. I'm like, awesome. Because this is, even though it was small from what I saw, um, it could be bigger every year. You and know, that, would, that's a, that's a really good thing for this. So you show, showed up, and you weren't expecting necessarily, or I guess you knew when you got there you were going to do some interviews, but for leading up to the event, you didn't know you were going to do any interviews. How many interviews did you guys end up actually doing? Eleven. That's awesome. Uh, we have, uh, I, I already Oprah published uh, an Ethan Garber's uh, interview. We have, Hi, bro. We have T.J. Harden. Oh, bro. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Oh, wait, T.J. Harden. And then Ethan. Uh, Ethan. Why isn't it playing? It doesn't want to play. All right. Well, it hates us. Yeah, it does. Hates us. Um, Jay Toya, which we got to get a Jay Toya drop. We do. Uh, Jalen Davies, uh, Quasi Gilmer. Oh, nice. Um, Malcolm's buddy. Uh, Femi Oladejo. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just, Go Bears. Yeah, yeah. They were just like, hey, you guys want to interview him, him, and him? And we're like, yes. W- which is funny because these are the dog days of summer. Not a lot happening. So uh, from, from a uh, content perspective, it's been pretty slow. So this uh, helped all of us out. And this is, you know, we're going to bring you some, you know, really good content. Uh, you know, all of us uh, that, that, that uh, promote uh, UCLA sports uh, and, and report on it. But uh, just just in general, it was just such a fun event. If if you have a chance, and it was weird because it came, what I think they announced it about a week ago, 
um, maybe they, you know, it, you know, I'm not criticizing at all, but uh, Bro. something like this, Bro. if they do it like two weeks in advance, uh, probably get more people. And especially when you get the word out about what this is about, because you had like little kids playing like, uh, uh, you know, some of the UCLA football players, you That's know, really cool. they had uh, two uh, screens and, and systems set up in the, um, I guess it's the uh, rec room. Re- what is it? Uh, I forget what they call it, but the um, it looks like room? it looks like a theater. Tra- oh, not training film room. Film room. Thank you very much. There you go. Um, and it was just cool. It was just such Mike, a relaxed. What do they call the people that give the money? Donies. Donors. Donies. <laughs> Donies. Thank you. You are on tilt right now, my man. Oh, <laughs> I'm so tired. It's, it's been awesome. a long ass day, it. dude. Yeah. Um, but no, it it was really good, and it was just like I said, it was just so relaxed, and the players were just in a jovial mood. We're not in the season yet. Yeah. But uh, and this is the thing. I actually did one of my uh, uh, two minute drills beforehand. Uh, usually a lot of people talk about how media, the conference media days are the unofficial start to college football. 10 years ago, when this game was out every mid July, that was the, that was the start of the college football, the unofficial start of the college football season for for us. Right. Yes. And now you have an event that's marking this occasion and it was just really fun. And I hope in the future donors are able to, uh, you know, just see what's available to them. And, uh, hey, I got a cool shirt. They also were giving out uh, posters. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a poster guy anymore. So yeah. and, uh, my kids are not really either. So um, we well, got a cool shirt. Uh, unless it's like Lady Tron or David Bowie or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we'll get to that later. But uh, just in general, it was really fun. Um, and. We had a lot of a lot of the same questions for uh, for the uh, for all of the players. And it was funny. There was a theme throughout. We were we asked several players. So, what do you think about your numbers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, your your skill numbers. And a lot of them were like, "Nah, man, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, they did me dirty." <laughs> like, like, nah, this isn't the way. Well, I was trying to find some of the, you know, because I'm waiting to get my hands on the actual game so I can run up like what the UCLA numbers are. And I'm sure James Williams is going to beat us all. Oh, this, he has he's it. All he over has it right? already. Yeah. Uh, but. But, you know, the, the ESP, EA released a lot of the top 25, the top this, top that. Mm-hmm. And UCLA is nowhere in any of that. So yeah. I knew that we're going to have some disappointed players because there's not a lot of highly rated anything for UCLA as far as this game goes, right? Yeah, yeah. So then, so they were a little bit, uh, you know. Uh, oh, Justin Martin was pissed. Was he? <laughs> he was like, how do how is my speed lower than Femi Oladejo? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then we asked Femi about it. He goes, well, hey, EA does what EA does, and we were just alluding to the fact, like, like, oh, maybe we should set up a a forty yard dash. And he goes, Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so we're like, Oh, throwing down the gauntlet. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, it was it was such. Um, you know, you were with me at at, at Pac twelve Media Day, the final Pac twelve Media Day last year in Vegas. Uh, it was it was serious. You know, we're asking questions about the team and all that. This was just fun. It was just we're being silly. We're asking about numbers. You know. Uh, how they got who was it i think it was brian addison who told us that um ea contacted him and was asking him like when he was in the transfer portal about you know what is his decision what's happening uh and i guess they also um i i believe they contacted a few players about certain aspects of their look um or as brian i think it was brian addison that said his drip um Whatever. I have to ask my daughter what that means in kid translation. Um, <laughs> but um, apparently they did a really good job and they were really diligent on the look of the players. Like, for example, um, I think it was Jalen Davies who told us that him and another defensive player were wearing like white bands uh, uh, like on their uh, bicep. Uh-huh. It showed up in the game. And the only way they could have known was that they did that during spring game so they not only looked at spring game video they looked at instagram pictures like they did their due diligence in trying to best represent the players um it's funny quasi that is pretty cool quasi gilmer was kind of like uh, he, he was mad because there was a quasi gilmer and then there was another player who's more of a tight end who was like gazi quilmer on ucla's roster i forget the actual name and he goes, I guess that's supposed to represent me. But what I'm more mad about is that that person has a higher rating than I do. <laughs> I was like, well, hopefully EA does a really good job of updating this uh, as the season goes along. But it's just funny just to see their, their and, you know, they weren't legitimately mad. They were just like, you know, what? Well, come on, y'all. You know, yeah. they were just there. Was, but they love the game. Uh, they love the fact that it draws more attention to 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 them, the schools, you know, college football in general. 
and uh, just led to you know just questions about well how do you think the uh, the season is going to go, <clears throat> and with and without going into great detail, we asked a few of the offensive players, uh, w- what is the uh, the West Coast offense going to look like, and they're like, well you know we don't want to give too much, but um, uh, who was oh god I think it was a receiver who said it's the 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 the, the playbook in in EA in, in in the in the college football game does not have as many passing plays oh. as Eric Bianami is presenting. So there's that. Well, that so, could be yeah. either really good news or really bad news. Yeah, depending exactly. On the, like, complexity of it. We just yeah. talked to Wayne about that and picking up the offense, although he says that he thought Garber's was picking up towards the end. Mm-hmm. Um, just, like, I, I kind of want to do a deep dive on, like, what the ratings are and stuff. I'll, I'll try to have that by <laughs> next week. But just from the perspective of, like, the overall team ratings – the Big Ten Conference, um, the EA sports rankings have them about the same place that all the national outlets have the Bruins. I think they have them. There's uh, 18 teams in the Big Ten, and yeah. they have them uh, 15th or 14th in the, in the overall Big Ten, which is not out of line with what like a lot of people are predicting for, for them. Uh, overall, though, a 79, and that would actually make them tied – Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For tenth, right? Because it has Which Indiana is? is a seventy-nine, Purdue is a seventy-nine, Rutgers is a seventy-nine, UCLA is a seventy-nine, Washington is a seventy-nine, right? Really? The only teams that are rated worse than them in the according to EA are the are Spartans at seventy-eight, the Wildcats at seventy-six, and the Terrapins, uh, Maryland at, at oh no, Maryland has a they're at a seventy-nine too. Well, maybe I'm reading this wrong or this had it out of order. So there's a lot of teams like basically they they look at the Big Ten as Ohio State, Oregon, uh, as the elite teams, uh, Michigan and Penn State as the just off that pace. Quote, unquote, second tier. Iowa, USC, uh, Wisconsin in the next tier. Um, It looks like Wisconsin, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Nebraska and Illinois in the next tier. And then after that, it's like a bunch of all the same teams as far as their rankings go. So UCLA being an overall 79, an offense of 78, and a defense of 79. So that's like... There's not even any peaks and valleys. There's just kind of like a generic score. And it, actually, looking at these scores, it looks like all these are kind of just like all the, the all the bottom half of the Big Ten is just like 79, 79, 79, offense, defense, overall. So interesting. Um, I'm curious to see how they update it as the game goes forward, like yeah. you were saying, Mike. But so, so was there – what was the – you know, other than the um, uh, Femi kind of strutting on Justin Martin, were there any other – uh, fun or interesting things you can share with us about the actual event. I mean, you know, <clears throat> like I said, we we had no idea what we're gonna go into, and then we kind of like organized ourselves, um, and we were kind of you know uh, we were we were joking that um, you know we don't need Andrew Sinatra, who's the uh, SID there. We love we love Andrew. Andrew is such a stoic guy, but he is he's all business, mm. and he jokes when he jokes, but he is always on business, and and he's. He's one of the SIDs that like floats behind us to just kind of like make sure that the questions are okay and appropriate, blah blah blah. And we're so we were joking, we're like we don't need no Andrew here. Uh-huh. You know, we 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 conducted ourselves we got this. <laughs> exactly with the proper decorum. But yeah, but but we read the room too. This was a fun event. We didn't want to go into like, oh, what about this or what about this? It was fun. Tell the, us the why guys you think Chip Kelly having... sucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, a few good. guys talked about Chip Kelly. Um, one thing, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think this is a knock maybe it is but Ethan Garbers did say something about the fact that uh Eric Bieniemy is putting a lot of trust in him oh. uh so like was does that mean that Chip Kelly didn't but anyway that's kind of reading a little bit too much into it but uh either way just you know we we got to go forward and uh that's 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 pretty interesting to see that uh Garbers has that feeling about um what this offense is but here here's something i i i don't think i said this uh um, I said this with Wayne, but let me reiterate that the fact that w- at the beginning of spring, a lot of the terminology is what really throws off these players. And at the beginning of spring, the terminology was maybe like two to four word uh, phrases to run a play. Now they're up to like nine to ten word sentences to run a play to get that, you know, get this call in or whatnot. Yeah. And they say that it's, it's complicated, but um, um who was it? Cameron Jones, uh, running back, said that it's it's complicated, but you have all of these. It, it, 
you're not learning college football. You're learning a mixture of college football and NFL football because you have all these NFL players, and that's just he he said for him that's just going to really um, really help out his game. You know, he's he he he's just coming in uh, fresh to uh, to the Bruins, but he's already appreciative of of what the coaches are bestowing him. You know, with with their knowledge. So uh, I'm at every interview I I, I did. It just it, it got me more excited for what this team could achieve. Oh, that's awesome, Mike. Well, it's cool, yeah. and it sounds like a really fun event. I'm glad that uh, you end up going, right? Uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's very cool. All right. Well, before we get to what's brewing with you, we did have one call on the hotline: eight zero five three nine nine four WBS. Suck it, rain of Troy. Suck it, rain of Troy. And um, I don't know who called, so let's just play it and see what it is. Uh, here, let's find it. Hey guys. Uh, this is Diego checking with you during the dog days. Um, we watching the team develop here for the Bruins. Just got a couple of quick things to say. I might run past the time allotment. I apologize. But uh, a couple of things on the team itself. Jay Tui is your man. I think you have him on the field. The other team has to run around him, and that gives our other players a chance. And it puts pressure on their team to be able to run. If he's not on the field, they just push the ball straight forward. So that's pretty axiomatic in football. And I think Jay is the guy that keeps our defense stout, and he keeps us in every game. Uh, the other side of the ball, I'd, I'd go with Garbers. He looks like he might be a little fragile, so let's hope he makes it through the season. But obviously he's going to touch the ball on almost every play. He's got to be our number one offensive player. The rest of the guys are pretty good. I think they're getting a, a bad a review. Um, I think they're really talented. I think the offensive line, being veteran-laden, if that's a cliche you want to use, um, is going to be better than thought. I think all these guys are going to be bigger, stronger, faster, more experienced, even though the offensive line got a lot of junk thrown on it last year. I think they're going to surprise. So I think the offense is going to be great. Defense is going to hold us in. I think we win more games than currently expected. Um Recruiting-wise, looks like we're past the dopamine hit that all the chip haters got when chip left and everything everything was going to come up, uh, balloons and sunshine and roses on the recruiting side. But here in the doldrums of summer, it looks like our recruiting is falling apart. And uh, so what, what we end up doing in the program is we get emotional about somebody like chip. We're egged on by the 24-7 parasite. The Underheads at Morgan Center feel like they have to make a change and make a change. We destabilize the program. We end up starting all over again, and we end up wasting time. And we've been doing this for 20 years, since 1998. And uh, I'm probably the only guy calling in here who's ever been in the Rose Bowl watching the UCLA Bruins win a Rose Bowl game. So we can do it. We've done it. But we've been wasting time ever since with these ill-advised changes. So I think the program is stalling out. I hate the change in schedule. I hate playing Cal four times. I know you've got family at Cal. I don't mean to disrespect Cal, but we are not rivals with Cal. I've been around the program since Tommy Prothro. We are not rivals with Cal, okay? There is no emotional investment in playing Cal one way or the other, from their side or from our side. We are not their rival. They are not our rival. Our rival is USC. So, again, sorry about the overrun, but uh, the schedule has been changed for the worse. I think you'll probably agree with me, playing Cal four straight times. The only way I can make sense of that is it mollifies the calimony impulse that's probably still alive and well uh, in the corridors of the regions and at, and at Berkeley itself. Maybe by playing them four times, we're showing some goodwill. We're kind of trying to sneak past the graveyard of calimony. That's the only way it makes sense to me. But as a football fan looking at the schedule, it really diminishes the schedule. It turns us into a backwater. We're playing backwater teams and backwater leagues in a backwater region. You know, the West Coast of space is a backwater of college football now. And uh, we're going to be content to stay there. And Utah, what sense does that make? I mean, they have no fan appeal here. Uh, they're a great football program, not diminishing them at all. But who in Los Angeles really gets up for a trip to Salt Lake City? I've been there several times. You guys probably have. What's what's the point? Uh, so not not a great ad there either. And uh, guaranteed, one of those two games is going to be a loss. 
and maybe he'll sustain some injuries. So, in general, the, the program is being run by a bunch of government bureauc uh, bureaucrats. We are the DMV of college football for that reason. We can't get out of our own way. We don't have any imaginative leadership. When you look at places like LSU, they're innovating in NIL. They're raising money. They're getting players. They're getting talent. They're moving their team down the field. We're just sitting here stuck with a bunch of pension-seeking, salary-sucking nothings at Morgan Center. You know, J.D. Morgan's gone. He's gone a long time now. So Guerrero and now Jarman, awful, terrible. They're keeping the seat warm. We're not moving anywhere. So I love the Bruins. Hate to be so negative, but that's what I'm seeing. Uh, and I love the show, you guys. Keep it up. Hope you had a great summer. Bye. So uh, Dave came out spitting hot fire. It's it's like we're right in the middle fire. of 2023 all over again. It's fire. Yes. It's coming in with 100-degree weather. That's right. Coming in hot. Um. I, no, I told. I I get it. The the Bruin battered syndrome is it, it, it's a real thing. It's I I hear it's going to be a part of the DSM six <laughs> uh, co coming up um, in the next twenty years. Uh, but no, seriously, I I do have to push back a little bit. Yeah, like the games against Georgia and Auburn were are going to be marquee. Were going to be marquee games if UCLA was to stay in the Pac twelve. We just talked to Wayne Cook about twelve thousand road trip miles just this year alone, going to Hawaii, then LSU, and Rutgers, and Penn State. Um, this, I think, is... is I, I get it, too. There Remember, were a lot travel's of, not an excuse, though. It, it's not, but... Except for the uh, the the eighteen the, the equipment drivers, yeah, I feel for them. I feel for that guy and Wayne and Matt. I feel for that and guy. Josh. Um, I, oh, we didn't ask uh, Wayne about that. What do you think about the driver? <laughs> anyway, um, but UCLA does not have to have a death gauntlet run to the end of the season. That's kind of what I thought, and that's that's the thing. Like, okay, George Georgia is a freaking legitimate powerhouse. It would have been great to play them, but I think that unless UCLA makes major changes, they're going to get their ass kicked. Auburn, kind of a crapshoot. They're not as good as Georgia, but that's another possibility. They could beat Georgia Keeping, at the. I mean, they could beat. They could beat. Georgia. They could beat Auburn at the Rose Bowl. Yeah, going to Auburn be tough. That would be you tough. Know, kind of, yes, but you know, I think that's one of those things. Kind of like the LSU game, bro. Georgia would wipe the floor with UCLA, well, no matter wipe the floor where with it anybody, is. Anybody, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we'll see. But, and, but yeah, and that's the thing. I think this 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 decision was made because UCLA is going into a tougher conference. I mean, they're going to play the likes of Michigan, Penn State, um, Ohio State, and those are the top three. But then you have. Uh, uh, you're going to the teams night might not be as good like Wisconsin or Minnesota or Rutgers or um, or Nebraska, but those stadiums are going to be filled and it's going to be very hard to get a win in those places. I don't think I said this. Um, I think leading into our Godfather interview last week, but I don't think that that any of the Big Ten teams should play any of the SEC teams. Uh, at all going forward. I don't think you should schedule those matchups anymore just because you're probably going to get those matchups in the playoff because there's probably going to be That's a good at point least too. three yeah. or four yeah. SEC teams and at least three or four Big Ten teams in the playoff every year now. Yeah. And so we can wait for those matchups. But for UCLA in particular, like, yeah, sure, I'd love to go to Georgia. We talked to Wayne about it earlier. Like, that'd, that'd be a fun game to go to. But, you know, for the as tough as UCLA schedule is going to be going forward, being in a freaking yeah. AT team conference, yeah. and they're always going to have a schedule that's kind of sort of like it is this year, probably uh, when they added in LSU uh, and you know in that stupid Fresno State game. I mean, not that that's that's a, that's yeah. that's that's kind of uh, apples I'm sorry, and oranges I, from this, I, but it's like they already are going to have a tough schedule. You know, I like you know, I I disagree with Diego on his assessment of Cal and the rival and all that stuff. I would like it if UCLA had a second rival, and I think that Cal is kind of like that. So I dis I disagree there, but that's okay. Reasonable minds can differ, um, and obviously I'm a little biased in that regard because I still haven't been to an actual Cal UCLA football game with my daughter because you know uh, fate has intervened. But 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 I'd much rather have games you can you can look at and say, oh yeah. That's going to be a game that we can win. You know, uh, we should be able to win on the non-con schedule. Then the, vice versa. And you know, Diego referred to it as a backwater, but as of right now, the ACC is still 
one of the major conferences, so you still oh, yeah. get credit for playing a major conference school. It's not like you're playing a Mountain West school or, God forbid, an FCS, uh, an FCS team. So you get all the bonus points for playing a team like Cal, but it's actually should be an easier game that you should be able to win. I'm sorry I cut you off, Mike. But the last thing is, what I don't understand is, I, I agree with him. I don't need Utah on the schedule. I don't. Why do we ever want to play them ever again, really, uh, just so we can get our ass kicked again? You know, like I, those games, even when we win, they're hard games. Well, that's, that's what and I was going to say, lose, too. Yeah. We lose those games big time, you know? And and by the way, the, you know, Diego said there's no reason for, you know, anybody in L.A. to, to cheer for Utah. There's a big, big, big Mormon following for Utah in Southern California. So that only benefits Utah. There's no benefit to UCLA at all playing them because you're not getting a higher profile school because you're playing a freaking Big 12 team who they have cares as far as that goes, right? They're a major conference, but they're, you know, you're playing the best team in the major conference just below yours. I, I don't get the Utah one at all uh, other than there might have been some like handshake, wink, wink agreements going on there with our administration. So, so yeah, so kind of, you know. Uh, just, just. You know, that's, I see the that's my whole thought on well, that. Well, here's thing. my advantage of it: it's still a competitive game, and it's local-ish. If you're gonna play Utah, you might as well play an SEC team. As far as like, you're I probably know. gonna be playing something pretty. It's gonna be a pretty tough matchup, and you might as well get the prestige of getting an SEC win as opposed to a Big Twelve win. And you know that's why I, mean? I think you know, well, Cal. It, I think there should be at least maybe not every year, every two years, a home and home, but there should be some association with our UC brethren, even though we are uh, sponsoring yeah, their, their, their foot. A traditional, or even you know, go back in the Pac-12 which a little is, bit further. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, but whether it's Utah or Cal or ASU, um, I think this is a, a, a good... Don't schedule Arizona. Uh, Fuck those guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the schedule... The, I, you get no points for having a top ten strength of schedule. You're already going to have one. That just means you're already going to have one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let Ohio State play be, fucking Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let them do that. Let them do a, a preseason uh, SEC versus Big Ten. Yeah. Um. Screw it. You know. Hook up UCLA with like I don't know uh, Texas A&M we'll, we'll or something. Let's play Vandy. Put them on the schedule. Yes. I'm down. But with I still that. don't think that Big Ten should be playing SEC just because of what I just said. Yeah. Anyways. But. All right. And then as far as everything else, um, Diego, we're glad you're you're calling the show again. Uh, it was a lengthy call, but big deal, dude. I'll. I'll dude, I'll, I'll sweet call, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it up. And nice. um, I guess that that that's it. We're we're gonna we we had too much show today, so we're yeah. gonna. Finish up with what's brewing and two shows, too showsy, too sexy, right. too sexy, too showsy. All right, let's get to yeah, what's exactly. wrong with you. I don't know what that's so, about. Bill's favorite part of the show. What's brewing with you? What's brewing with you? You ask me. What's brewing with me? Yeah. What's brewing with you? What's brewing with me? What's brewing with you? Well, Mikey, what's brewing with you, dude? So last week wasn't horrible as 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 it has uh, like uh, my summer has been. Uh, the summer has just been sh- shite, but the last few weeks uh, it's been calmer. Uh, but last week was pretty rough because I had both of my daughters uh, have oral surgery to extract some uh, teeth. Yeesh. Because yeah, yeah teeth. it's bra- it's braces time. It's braces time, y'all. Yeah. And I'm dealing with a daughter who's going into high school and dealing with all of that that in encompasses being a teenager and stuff like that and she was worried about her uh her braces i'm like look i gave her i, I gave her this advice i was like look you can either let the braces own you or you or you can own the braces and she kind of understood that but i'm you know just trying to be a guide there i'm like look i got braces um worked out well you know the end result is what's important And she started slowly getting that. And I get it, you know, adolescence, you know, just trying to figure out how to try to be a a young adult and all that. Um, But yeah, I'm just giving her positive reinforcement Um, as well as my daughter, Poppy, who's she's not there yet, but she's still kind of like, "Eh, you know, whatever. Um, But uh, yeah, I've just been dealing with that now. (laughs) So that's uh, that's been on the plate. Um, But yeah, but just uh, on top of that, just, you know, chilling, just enjoying uh, the summer, it hasn't been too overly hot. Okay, well, actually, you're in the valley. Um, East L.A., the west side, not horrible. I know the rest of the world is is, is on fire right now, but uh, uh, we've been j- enjoying our time uh, gallivanting on, you know, especially on the west side, you know, yeah. going going here and there, and obviously the kids like, you know, going to the beach. But, you know, er, you know any adventure we've, we've been on, it hasn't been horrible, you know? So 
Um, There's been a couple yeah. of hot days up here, but otherwise it's 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 gotten cooler, Has it which is nice. Gone over a hundred here? Yeah, we had one day where it was like a hundred. Okay, it was hundred nine. Yeah. Oh wow. But that was uh, last week. I would say. Yeah, like on Friday, I think it was. It got to ninety six in East LA, which yeah. that's hot, but yeah, hundred nine is a lot worse. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Jake, what's wrong with you? Uh, not much. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to my, one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, I am a giant, ginormous Laker fan. I, I have been for longer than I've been a Bruin fan, actually. And um, one of my favorite podcasts that I discovered way too late, but um, is still going strong, is Laker Film Room with uh, Darius Soriano and uh, Dr. Pete Zayas. Uh, and uh, they did have Mike Trudell, the Lakers sideline reporter, on their show for uh, a year or two because... Um, uh, Zayas was employed by the Lakers, and the podcast became kind of like a de facto in-house you know, podcast for a while, yeah. um, even though they, they put together a wonderful show. And I really like the show just because they are very good at explaining things. It's a very technical podcast, but also they just, they, you know, and they, they, they express themselves very well. Um, so I, that kind of scratches my itch when I'm, when I'm listening to or watching things, right? I really love it. But Recently, the, uh, within the last month, they, you know, uh, Zayas left the Lakers because I guess when they're going through their little coaching search with for looking for um, what eventually became JJ Redick, the whole thing with with the UConn coach, um, uh, they said something that was, in my opinion, completely innocuous. Something about the whole coaching search for what's the Connecticut guy's name? I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Hurley. Um, they refer to it as being some sort of saga, and that like raised some alarm bells in the Lakers organization. So they're like, either oh, do the geez. podcast or whatever. And, we're, and whatever they were, they took the high ground. Um, and when they were talking about on their show recently, and they're like, well, look, you know, uh, we decided just to have our our show that we've built. Uh, and this is Zayas built, I think mostly. Um, take it as an ind- back to being an independent thing. And he left the Lakers, and now he's just doing his podcast again. And I will continue to listen because I I love their show. But it's now will be without Trudell because he's still a member of the Lakers. Yeah, well, and the, and the Lakers, and it just reminded me, like you know, what I like about what we do here on the What's Bruin Show. And even though Mike, Mike, you are employed by you know Bruin Report Online, mm-hmm. when you're here with me and we're doing our show, we are just an independent little pirate ship. And you know, we don't, you know, obviously you uh, you work as a reporter, so you have things that you know that you you know that sometimes you share with me and sometimes you share with the audience, but sometimes you don't. And that's something sometimes that we I res- share off air. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is yeah. that's something that we respect, right? Because yeah. you have your priority and you have your responsibilities working for the place that you work for. But still, when we come to the What's Bruin show, we are an independent little ship here and we do it because we like to do it. Yeah. And we do it because we like to talk about the Bruins. And the thing I respect the most about the Laker Filmer podcast is because there, there's some. People They've been around, around for a while, a long right? time. The guy's, yeah. or the guy's a genius. Yeah. Both guys are, are wonderful. Yeah. But. Like, I just made me think about how I like to talk about sports. And this goes into our conversation with Wayne, you know, and it's like Wayne is he's employed by the Bruins. But even if he wasn't employed by the Bruins, he would still be talking in a positive way about UCLA football because, number one, he's a former player. And that's what his thoughts are. That's yeah. just, but I just know that Wayne, his personality type is one that instead of dwelling on the negative stuff, he'd much rather talk about what we can find that is positive. And that's something that I think me and you, Mike, also share in common. And that's not to say that someone who criticizes a team, is their team, or someone who criticizes anything is doing something bad. It's just a different style. And I wanted to point that out because, you know, that's kind of what we have created in the What's Bruin show. Yeah. And it's what I like about the Laker film room is that they can talk about stuff. They can be technical about things. They can, they can have a good conversation about something, but it doesn't have to be overly negative. And they're not going to shy away from saying the negative thing if it needs to be said, but we're not always looking for the negative either, right? Yeah. And that's just how the, the, the lens I view sports through. You know, and it might come from just my background, you know, uh, my background as a sports fan, my background playing the different sports I played growing up and my experience at, you know, uh, participating in different teams or whatever. But that's just something that I appreciate about appreciate about that particular show. And it's something that I take pride in what we do here. And so I uh, if you're also a Laker fan and you haven't listened to Laker Film Room, which you probably already have, I not I'm, you know, I'm not really saying anything that nobody knows. It's a very popular podcast, but I uh, want to give them a shout out for continuing on their mission and just say, hey, you know, that, that's why we're here to have fun talking about the teams we love, even if, you know, it doesn't always go our way or go their way. You know, we can still 
you know, have a conversation about it and enjoy it. So I don't know, long winded way of saying it, but uh, that's what's wrong with me, Mikey. All right. Cheers. Um, so next week we're going to go back to talking about Big Ten teams. I'm going to probably talk about some EA Sports stuff now that when I once I get my hands onto the actual game. Uh, there's a couple things I was looking for that I was interested in, so I'll bring those observations next week and um, whatever else we kind of think about talking about. But uh, until then, uh, listen to my show I do with Megan talking about her trip to, Pran- to, to Paris. I think that was fun. Um, listen to our interview with Wayne Cook again because it was really good. Go back and listen to our interview with The Godfather from last week. Mm-hmm. Go back back and listen to the interview you did with Steve Tannen. Steve Tannen from Oregon. That was really good. And we have a few more interviews coming up in the uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. Yeah. So we're gonna we're just ramping right up in the football season. So it's like go back to uh, and listen to what's uh, coming out, and hopefully you will appreciate it. And um, yeah, we're almost here, man. The Big Ten is almost here. The football yeah. is almost here, and I'm looking forward to it. So August second, baby, man. Oh man. Mikey, until next time, what do we say? Go home. Good evening. Smoke them if you got them. That was the What's Brewed Show. Try us tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. It's got to be in and out, Mom. In or out. Well, I need the door closed. Thank you for your cooperation. Dude, bro, we place a ball on the West Coast. The final word is boob.